So welcome uh, to this service online for the 29th of March 2020. This will be a service of Holy Communion um, when we remember that Christ has died for us and rose again for us. We remember that we are the family of God, that we remember that Christ is with us and that we remember that Christ will come again. The service outline is available on the website uh, along with links to the hymns and the words for the intercessions and indeed the sermon will also be there. While we cannot gather together to physically receive the bread and the wine in Holy Communion, we are still part of the one body through the one spirit and we can continue to be refreshed as part of the one body through the one spirit. As we remember that Christ has died and rose again for us, as we remember that Christ is with us, as we remember that Christ will come again. I've also put some notes on the website on such spiritual communion if that will be helpful for you. So the Lord be with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firm the resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect uh, for this the fifth Sunday of Lent. Gracious Father you gave up your Son out of love for the world Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The readings, um, and the first is from Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. To be controlled by the human nature results in death. To be controlled by the spirit results in life and peace. And so a person becomes an enemy of God when he is controlled by his human nature, for he does not obey God's law, and in fact he cannot obey it. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. But you do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you, if in fact God's Spirit lives in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ lives in you, the Spirit is life for you, because you have been put right with God, even though your bodies are going to die because of sin. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from death lives in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of his Spirit in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is from John and chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
a man named Nazareth, who lived in Bethany, was ill. Bethany was the town where Mary and her sister Martha lived. This Mary was the one who poured the perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. The sister sent Jesus a message, Lord, your dear friend is ill. When Jesus heard it, he said, The final results of this illness will not be the death of Lazarus. This has happened in order to bring glory to God, and it will be the means by which the Son of God will receive glory. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he received the news that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said to the disciples, let us go back to Judea. Teacher, the disciples answered, just a short time ago the people there wanted to stone you. And are you planning to go back? Jesus said, a day has twelve hours, hasn't it? So whoever walks in broad daylight does not stumble, for he sees the light of this world. But if he walks during the night, he stumbles because he has no light. Jesus said this and then added, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go and wake him up. The disciples answered, If he is asleep, Lord, he will get well. Jesus meant that Lazarus had died, but they thought he meant natural sleep. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. But for your sake I am glad that I was not with him, so that you will believe. Let us go to him. Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us all go with the teacher, so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been buried four days before. Bethany was less than three kilometres from Jerusalem, and many Judeans had come to see Martha and Mary to comfort them over their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask him for. Your brother will rise to life, Jesus told her. I know, she replied, that he will rise to life on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she answered, I do believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. After Martha said this, she went back and called her sister Mary privately. The teacher is here, she told her, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up and hurried out to meet him. Jesus had not yet arrived in the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The people who were in the house with Mary, comforting her, followed her when they saw her get up and hurry out. They thought that she was going to the grave to weep there. Mary arrived where Jesus was, and as soon as she saw him, she fell at his feet. Lord, she said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her weeping, and he saw how the people who were with her weeping also. His heart was touched and he was deeply moved. Where have you buried him? he asked them. Come and see, Lord, they answered. Jesus wept. See how much he loved him, the people said. But some of them said, he gave sight to the blind man, didn't he? Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? Deeply moved once more, Jesus went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone placed at the entrance. Take the stone away, Jesus ordered. Martha, the dead man's sister, answered, There will be a bad smell, Lord. He has been buried four days. 
Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believed? They took the stone away. Jesus looked up and said, I thank you, Father, that you listen to me. I know that you always listen to me, but I say this for the sake of the people here, so that they will believe that you sent me. After he had said this, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He came out, his hands and feet wrapped in grave clothes and with a cloth round his face. Untie him, Jesus told them, and let him go. Many of the people who had come to visit Mary saw what Jesus did, and they believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the resurrection and the life. Please help us to know and share this life. Amen. Well, the story of Lazarus presents us with a seemingly impossible situation, a horrible situation with the death of a loved one, along with the question, does God care? And into this situation, Jesus comes and brings life out of death, brings good out of bad. We are told that Jesus was a close friend of Lazarus and indeed his two sisters, Mary and Martha. We are also told that after being advised of Lazarus's illness, he then delayed visiting for two days. When Jesus did arrive, Lazarus had been buried for four days, which prompted questions from Mary and Martha and those supporting them. Where were you? Why didn't you come sooner? Do you not care? But we also see in the story that Jesus did care, deeply. We see Jesus weeping over the death of his friend. And we see that he delayed for a reason. God was going to do a miracle, a miracle that would point people to God in that community, in that generation, and for generations to come. But at the time, people questioned Jesus and were frustrated by his delay, interpreting this as lack of care. Today, too, people question God and question whether God cares. We too are facing a horrible situation with coronavirus, a seemingly impossible situation as we face a challenge beyond our means. May we look to God who brings life out of death, who brings good out of bad, the God who does indeed care. Our Gospel reading today shows God bringing about a miracle, with Jesus bringing life out of death but not without significant opposition along the way. Jesus faced the impossible. Lazarus had been dead four days, not four hours. This was beyond all hope, and the onlookers knew that. There was disbelief in what Jesus could do. He was too late. I wonder if that is our view in our situation too. Each step of the way in this story, Jesus faced opposition. The disciples challenged Jesus about going to Lazarus in the first place. Don't go there, the people want to stone you in that place. When Jesus talks about Lazarus falling asleep, referring to his death, the disciples say, let's just let him sleep, um, then that will do him good. When Jesus meets Martha and says, your brother will rise to life, Martha responds, Yes, but not in this life, only in the life to come. Both Mary and Martha challenged Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died, suggesting he didn't care and was too late. Even when Jesus asked for the tomb to be opened, Martha cautioned against this, saying, the smell will be too bad. 
All along the way, Jesus faced opposition, disbelief and difficulty. Yet he persists in bringing new life to people, bringing hope out of despair, bringing good out of bad, life out of death. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. And he came out. People faced a choice. To believe in the God of miracles, who can bring hope out of a hopeless situation, or not. Jesus spoke of the life to come, the eternal life that he came to bring, life after death. But he also spoke of that eternal life invading the present, the life he also came to bring, life before death. Some resisted, but many did believe, and many would see this as a pointer to Jesus' death and resurrection, which would take place in the days to come. So, may we know this resurrection life in us, bringing good out of bad, and may we be channels of that life, that good for others. Jesus continues to bring life, to bring good out of bad, and I hope you are seeing this in the present situation we are facing. I've seen this in the network hubs that have started recently, since we have not been able to meet together physically as a church. These network groups, as we try and keep in contact with each other by phone and other means. Good conversations going on that were not there before. Getting to know people better and supporting each other more. Concerns being raised and being prayed for, for those who are ill, those who are worried. I've seen this in how people in the network hubs are wanting to extend these to include people not on our membership list, as we seek to be a blessing to others and show kindness to others. There is kindness being shown in the food bank, donations being made. And let's remember that this is how the early church grew, not necessarily through words or programmes, but in how they loved one another. The Acts of the Apostles in the Bible tells how the first disciples shared their belongings with one another according to what each one needed. And every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. Jesus said, if you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. I've seen such kindness personally. In my last sermon, I mentioned how my daughter was having difficulty in getting back from New Zealand. And she got back amazingly uh, last week. Yet I was really touched by a member of the church family emailing me uh, to say that her daughter who lives in New Zealand was offering my daughter accommodation if she was stuck. She didn't know my daughter and was taking a risk in terms of not knowing if my daughter had the virus, but rather than shutting off, she was offering help in our need. Others are showing such kindness by shopping for neighbours. Another example of good out of bad is how this is helping us to see what is important in life and what to prioritise in the nitty-gritty of life. Usually we are surrounded by luxuries and the general busyness of life. Now we are beginning to focus more on basic fundamentals and learning how to be more flexible with our set routines. This is I believe building our compassion for others as we learn what it is like not to have everything we want at our fingertips. We are learning how to make do with what we have and this is resulting in less waste and indeed less pollution. 
we are beginning to experience what many people in our world already experience as we begin to see what it is like to lack food availability, to lack job security, to lack financial stability. And may this encourage us to support those in particular need. Our curate Joe Cooper was telling me this week how there is now increased demand at the food bank. And details of how to help is on our website, how to donate or how to volunteer. And let's remember the key saying of Jesus in this Bible story. I am the resurrection and the life. And remember the Christian hope that death is not the end. Our other Bible reading today is from Romans chapter 8. At the end of that chapter it says, Nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither death nor life. None of us can guarantee what will happen to us in this life, but we can be certain of God's love for us, his strength within and the hope of heaven. And may all this encourage us to lean on God and trust in him rather than our own resources and trust in him rather than being consumed by fear or worry over money or work or loneliness. Like those in our Bible reading, we face a choice to believe in the God of miracles who can bring hope out of a hopeless situation or not, to plod on by ourselves or to lean on God. And may our belief in God spur us on to pray for others and be there for others in this situation. Some of us will have more time to pray at the moment through isolation. Some may feel frustrated that they can't be of practical help at the moment, but one of the most valuable things we can do is to pray and to pray for others. Pray for people in your network hub, find out what they want prayer for and pray for God's help along the lines of our service last week for God's strength within to guide and to sustain. Pray for people on the news, for the government to make wise decisions. Pray for people you know and you don't know in the NHS. Pray for our shops and delivery drivers. Pray for yourselves and for others and be prepared where possible to be part of the answer to those prayers. Maybe use the Lord's Prayer as a pointer for prayer. In each church I've served in, I've asked specific people to be prayer warriors, to pray for specific things. Not to give them something to do or to make them feel good, but because it always makes a difference for good. May we all learn to be prayer warriors in this situation. Not particularly relying on a strong faith, but relying on a simple faith in a strong God. Let's recap. In a seemingly impossible situation, Jesus brings life out of death, good out of bad. He does so despite significant opposition each step of the way. May we know such resurrection life in us and bring such resurrection life to others. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you that you bring life out of death, good out of bad. Lord, please do that for us. Please help us to be channels of such life to others. Amen. to read the words of the creed what we believe we believe in one god the father the almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one lord jesus christ 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We're going to have our prayers, and I'm going to be using some words that have been prepared um, by Carol Ritson for our intercessions today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we hold in your presence all those called by you to preach the gospel and to lead your people, that they will continue to walk closely with you, receive your wisdom strength and anointing, so that by word and deed they may proclaim your saving love. Give wisdom to everyone involved in organising, filming, editing and putting online various church services during this time of isolation. Help these services to be easily accessed by those people who are unable to go to church, as well as the many who attend regularly. Make all missionaries who have been called by you to preach the gospel fruitful in their evangelism, kept safe in your care, and help them to demonstrate your love in the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, grant the Queen insight and discernment that she will know your will and follow with courage as our monarch. Give the Prime Minister, the Cabinet and members of the opposition parties good health and strength. Guide them in their councils and give them the courage to work on behalf of the most vulnerable, apportion the burden fairly and give vital support to the most needy. Grant courage and wisdom to diplomats, United Nations, peacemakers, organisations and envoys are working to bring peace and security to places across the world where there is health and political instability that could escalate into violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all doctors, nurses and all those involved in healthcare who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. Protect people who are working hard to help others at this difficult time. Shop workers, food distributors, farmers and all those involved in retailing, bus and taxi drivers and all who work in transportation, workers in domestic, factory, utility, refuse, charity and voluntary positions and everyone else behind the scenes working to keep things running smoothly. We ask that you will help them to work for your glory in their own particular vocation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of compassion, be close to those who are ill, or in pain, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation, in their anxiety be their hope, 
and in the darkness their light. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low. Hold safe in your everlasting arms all those who are suffering in mind, body or spirit. We remember in our hearts those people in our lives who need your peace, comfort and healing. In the moment of silence, I encourage you to bring particular people that you know before God in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour. Give us the opportunities to make a Christian difference in our community. Increase our expectations of what you long to do, to change people's lives through social action, evangelism, prayer and kindness. Be with all those who are struggling with money or who are worried about their future. We pray for self-employed people, people who have lost their jobs and people in need of assistance from the food bank. Bless with your peace and love all those who live in our community. I encourage you in a moment of quiet just to bring particular people on your street, maybe your next door neighbours, before God in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a moment, just for our own personal prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead, and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. To use the words of the Lord's Prayer now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So we draw near with faith. We receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us, and his blood which he shed for us. We eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ keeps us in eternal life. The blood of Christ keeps us in eternal life. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
So, be encouraged in bringing life to others, in being examples of good coming out of bad situations. Can I encourage you to share examples of God bringing good out of bad? And maybe use the comment section um, at the end of this YouTube clip to give examples of how you've seen uh, or are seeing God bringing good out of bad situations. So we can all share in that. So the blessing. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.